guys welcome back to our youtube channel it's a girl funny lungu back with another reaction video if you're new to this channel make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe like i said my name is funny lungu if you're new welcome if you're not welcome back thank you for 20,000 subscribers uh you guys are the best keep liking keep sharing keep um doing whatever you do and thank you for your support for your continuous support please motivate me by dropping the links all the names to whatever videos you want me to react to and i'll be more than glad to react to them so today i'm going to be reacting to amidi that shuts up the christians forever <laughs> so without wasting time let's get into the video now i have learned that the name of muhammad was not not actually muhammad but his name was abu Qasim. could you please tell me what age was muhammad in which age was muhammad when he became the title Muhammad because it is a very vital question is what which age when Muhammad was born you see as an infant a little baby his grandfather Abdul Muttalib took him to the Kaaba you know that it was Abraham a pagan worship place, and yeah. his son Ishmael had Abraham and Ishmael had built and he presented this infant child to the leaders of the Quraysh and they asked him what have you named him and he said, Muhammad. He says, it's a very novel name. It's something new. We never had such a name before. He says, I want my grandchild to be praised throughout the world. Because Muhammad literally means the praised one. So from birth, the first name that was given to him was Muhammad. Now this expression, Abu Qasim, comes later in history. The Arabs have a system. You see, that if you are the father of a child called Qasim, so you are Abu Qasim, the father of Qasim. Mm -hmm. You are Abu Ibrahim, the father of Abraham. Mm -hmm. But you have your own name. Mm -hmm. So this is a respectful way of calling people by Abu Bakr. It's not his name. You see, but he said, now you are the father of Bakr. Mm -hmm. So this is Abu Qasim means the father of Qasim. So I just want to read a bit more of Matthew, where Jesus speaks again about the three days. This is just, just from, uh, this is from a translation of the Bible called the NIV. It's Matthew chapter 16, verse 21. And it says, From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the elders, chief priests, and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. And so uh, I think when you read all of it, he is saying that the three days I'm going to die there. I've got some other references up here as well as to those, but they're all fairly similar where they talk about Jesus dying. I just want to know what you say that, because there are many verses in the Bible, I don't know how much time I want to take up here, but where Jesus says, you know, I, I did die. No, my son, you have to agree with me that what Jesus was talking about, the sign of Jonah, that sign was a miracle. Sign means a miracle. You have to, it's not a road sign. Stop, yield, go. It's not a it's road sign. There were no road signs in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. So he's not talking about road signs. He's talking about a miracle. The Jews want a miracle from him. Not a road sign. So Jesus said, my miracle is that of Jonah. And then what the miraculous thing about Jonah is that we expect him to die three times over and he didn't die. You see, if I had a gun and I lose my temper and put six shots through you, to your heart, and it is shattered and you die, is that a miracle? Is that? But those six shots tearing your heart to pieces and you laugh. <laughs> it's a miracle? Yes. Yes, that's a miracle. That's a miracle. Six bullets I put through your heart and you still laugh. <laughs> that's a miracle. I'll be terrified of you. Do you know that? If that happened, I'll be terrified of you. <laughs> so Jesus is talking that, look, the miracle mine is that of Jonah. What happened to him is going to happen to me. What happened to Jonah? We expect him to die. We expect him to die at every step. If he died, it's not a miracle. Jesus. If what they tell us about him, he also is supposed to die. He is expected to die. If he died, it's not a miracle. If he died, what they did to him, and if he died, it's not a miracle. If he didn't die, it's a miracle. So I'm asking, he said, I will be like Jonah. Jonah is alive, you agreed, and Jesus is dead. And that is in your language of the Englishman, it is unlike. 
in Zulu. I'm asking the Zulus. Goguba Jengochona. He said, just like Jonah. So I'm asking the Zulu, is this Jengochona or Ngai Jengochona? Is this like Jonah or unlike Jonah? And they say it's unlike Jonah. I'm asking the Africana, one Suas Yona. You know, like Jonah, Suas Yona. I'm asking the Africana, is this Suas Yona or Ni Suas Yona? In Arabic, he says, Ya Mu'allimu Nuridu an Nara Min Ka Ayatan. Very strong. In Arabic, this statement of Jesus is very, very strong compared to the English. It's Jilun. This is the Bible is written by the Christian, by the way, not me. Jilun shirirun wa fasikun yatlubu ayatan wa la tuta lahu ayata illa ayata yunan al nabiyu li annahu kama kana yunanu fi batn al huti thalasa tayyamin wa thalasa layalin hakaza the word I was looking for was hakaza just like that so I'm asking the Arab Christian is this hakaza or la hakaza Jesus and Jonah is it hakaza just like that or la hakaza he said, no, it's la hakaza. So, come on, you prove now that this statement is, 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 is a revelation from God. The Holy Ghost inspired Matthew to, to write it down. Then it is proving that Jesus is a, if I was a Jew, I'll never accept Jesus. As a Muslim, I believe in Jesus as the Messiah, one of the mightiest messengers, as a Muslim. But as a Jew, I said, look, this man was put to the test and he failed again and again, he's failing. According to the test that he himself lays on himself, he is a failure, he is an imposter. And as an imposter, we killed him. I would have said that if I was a Jew. But as a Muslim, I say I believe that he was a true messenger of God. And you have misunderstood everything. You have misunderstood. Next question, please. Thank you, sir. May I have more than one question if I go back? Yes, yes. Thank you. Mr. Didad, if you quote Acts 2.22, where Peter says that Jesus did by, the, by God's power the miracles, which is right, then why would you not accept what Peter says in, later in the book of Acts, particularly 4 verse 12, uh, about under no other name is anyone saved except by Jesus? Thank you. uh, you're not trying to prove by that that Jesus is God, I hope. Uh, no, I'm trying to prove that, uh, that if you take one source, then why not? No, no. I would be prepared to accept that. I said, look, he's talking to the Jews. Ye men of Israel, you Jews. Because Jesus came for the Jews. And in his time, Jesus' time, there was no other way. It was identical to in the time of Moses. In the time of Moses, we said Moses was the way to God. The children of Israel, they thought it through the golden calf. God didn't like it. He said, look, this is what I want. You have to go through Moses. Whatever Moses tells you about God, you have to accept. In the time of David, David was the way to God. In the time of Solomon, Solomon was the way to God. In the time of Jesus, Jesus was the way to God. In the time of Muhammad, he is the way to God and for mankind for eternity. So in every dispensation, the man of God is the firstborn of God. He is the representative of God and as such you must listen to him. That's what it means. So I accept that. That the people, the Jews, they had no other way because there was no Muhammad there. If they wanted to follow Jesus, they must listen to now Peter, he's represented. Peter says, look, this is what Jesus wanted you to believe, that he's your Messiah. Follow him, follow him. Salvation is yours. Thank you. Mr. Dinat, could you please explain how God could save the world as the New Testament claims if Jesus was not God coming in the flesh? Let me first correct my brother Shurosh about Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. You see, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim means in the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Allah, Allah, who is most gracious, most merciful, and He's those God's 99 attributes. That is Allah. He's not 99 gods. He's not three in one. Whereas the Christian formula is in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Okay. Three. How does God save the world? That was the question. How does He save? There is only one way. And the way is, believe in God and do good deeds. 
This is what Jesus says. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, most assuredly I am telling you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Unless you are better than the Jew, there is no heaven for you. That is the way of salvation. I love how Amit that answered the last two questions. And I feel like I really don't have to input much when it comes to this video in particular. I was comfortable with the way you answered them. I feel like I shouldn't add anything. But if you guys have something to add, please comment down below. I'm always eager to learn what you guys have to say. And your contributions are always welcome. Although in the beginning, um, he mentioned the Kaaba and how Abraham actually built it. So why did Abraham build the Kaaba in the first place? That's something I'd love to um, understand. Otherwise... Uh, I don't know. The title to this is quite expressive. And I really don't have much to say. What do you have to say, guys? And please answer my question. If there's anything you want me to react to, please comment down below the name, the link, and I'll be more than glad to react to whatever you guys suggest. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.